trig functions are based on triangles. Uh, this video is going to focus on the sine function. We know from geometry, it's always said that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. What does that mean? It means that if you have a right triangle, an angle here, the sine of this angle is the ratio of this side to this side. It's just a ratio, that's all it is. Uh, and that's fixed regardless of whether um, you have a large triangle, like so, or a smaller triangle. You see, the sine of this angle, it prescribes a ratio of the length of this side to this side, or the length of this side to that side, regardless. For example, in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, the ratios of the sides are uh, 2 to 1 to radical 3. And from this example, you would say that the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, opposite over hypotenuse. Um, you would expect that the sine of smaller angles should be small because the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is small. And for larger triangles, you would expect the sine to be larger because the ratio is a little bit l larger. Uh, the rest of the video is going to explain why the sine function uh, has the graph the way it does which you wouldn't normally expect. Uh, I mean, how is this related to triangles? That's what we're going to figure out. All right, what I have shown here, I have constructed a circle with a central angle, and this and this, they will display the x and the y coordinates of this point as I move it around. There's the radius of the circle. Uh, this is the measure of the central angle. And I have included the sine of the angle for different values of uh, theta. So check it out. As I had the 30 degree angle earlier, that's about 30 degrees, we said that the sine of 30 was 1 half. That means that the opposite to the hypotenuse is 1 half. And you can see that that's true regardless of how I change the size of the circle. The ratio stays the same. That's based off of similar triangles. All these triangles that I'm making are similar. So the trig functions are going to be the same because it doesn't change the ratio of the, the size. Now look at what happens to sine theta when the angle is small. You see the opposite side is decreasing in length and it's decreasing the value of sine. And the sine of zero is therefore zero because there is no opposite side. And as the angle increases, the radius is staying the same, but the opposite side is increasing. So therefore, their ratio is going to increase and get bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's going to max out at 1. That's why the sine of 90 degrees is 1. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. That's how these things are defined. Now, what happens when you go past 90 degrees? You come over here. Look at what happens. The x-coordinate goes negative. The sine function, we're talking about this angle now, and here it's still POR, uh, the sine function is defined as this is the opposite side now. And this, of course, is still the hypotenuse. It starts at 1. Their ratio starts at 1 because they're at the same length. And then it shrinks down again. Right? The opposite side is getting shorter. And shorter still until it again reaches 0. So the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 or 90 is 0 and the sine of pi is zero. Beyond 180 degrees, all right, the sine function now, we're, we're talking about the sines of these big angles here, all right? This, uh, it's, beyond one, it's beyond 180. Uh, but the opposite side is still this side, and the hypotenuse has remained the, the same. However, the opposite side gets counted as a negative quantity. See that? It gets counted as being negative because it's below the axis. Hence, the sine of such an angle is going to be a negative value. So it's going to start again at zero, and then the ratio is going to grow in the negative direction to minus one, where it, it's, that's as largely negative as it can be. And then when you go past 270 degrees, which is here, look at what happens to the sine. It's going to shrink back down again to zero. That's why, that's what gives the, the sine function its its particular shape. It starts at zero, then goes up, 
and down, and bottoms out, and it goes right back to where it started uh, again. And it keeps on doing that the further around that you go. It just keeps it just keeps on re repeating that that pattern. Now the deal with the unit circle is if we make the circle of radius length one. Now, the sine of the angle is the ratio of this side still to this side, but since this side is of length 1, this actual piece is the sine of the angle, because the sine of the angle is this length divided by that length, or this length divided by 1. As you can see, it's just going to be the y coordinate. So that's why, again, sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and then it shrinks back down, goes to minus 1, and so on and so forth. The cosine function has a very similar treatment. The cosine of the angle is the ratio of this segment to the hypotenuse. And again, if I have the radius of 1, then the cosine of the angle is actually segment OQ. It's the, the length of that, of that segment. So, or it's the x-coordinate of this point P. See? They're the same. So this, the cosine, you, well, cosine is the ratio of this side to this side, and you can see that the, co the ratio of pro the, the sides get closer to each other in length at a, at a zero degree angle. That's why the cosine of zero is one. And then the length of the horizontal side shrinks down as the angle grows, and hence the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And again, the similar treatment for angles past 90 degrees. Right? Cosine is still the length of this piece, but it's negative because it's in this direction. So after going to zero, the cosine shrink, uh, well, grows in the negative direction to minus one, and then it's going to come back again to zero, and then it's going to go return again to where it started at one, and then just repeat itself every 360 degrees.